Have you ever seen those flashy custom paint jobs the pros have and thought, I would like to get in on that, it looks legit. But sadly, you don't have the cash to be sending it away. Well, fear not. I have got a rad video coming up today. We are gonna be looking at how to paint like a pro, but from the comfort of your own home. Yep, I'm gonna be taking a dive into the world of spray painting, having never really done it before. So not actually knowing sort of any of the prep, the processes or the finishing, it is going to be a completely new one for me. And I do have a pretty cool frame to do it on. But to help guide me through this tricky world of paint and God knows what else, I'm gonna be joined by professional spray painter, Paul Laban of JMJ Designs, who very kindly actually has done stuff for me in the past, including custom bikes and a custom lid. So to keep things fairly simple, and where I think a lot of us are going to begin, I have got this little beauty, this Hardtail Canyon Stitch 360. It's gonna become my new pump track bike. But what do I do with it? Where do I begin? What colors? Who knows? So I think without further ado, we should head on down and meet Paul. Right then, Paul, thank you for having me down at your place. No problem, it's great to have you here, Rick. I know, it's been a long, long time coming. Now, basically, bud, I have got this lovely frame here, which I think deserves a bit of customization. Of course. And, uh, you know, I'm gonna be doing it with a rattle can. I don't have all the fancy equipment here, but I don't really know how to do it. So I've come down here, and you're gonna teach me a little bit, and I thought I can take those skills back home. So uh, I was hoping you could give me a rundown of what to do. Okay, so. First up, you've got a raw frame, which is a great starting place. Yeah. Um, first thing you need to do that is give it a good clean and a degrease. Once that's all done, you want to make sure that it's been keyed up. Okay. So you can, in this case, it's it's pretty um, well keyed. Yeah. But you can go over it with a bit of sandpaper or some or just to take the pads. take the shine off it, sort of thing. Yeah. Take all the greasy fingerprints of mine off as well. That's it. Well, you want to take, clean the fingerprints first, and then. Sand it, because you don't want to be sanding them into the... Okay. A lot of people, and you guys and girls at home, that you are going to have painted frames that you are going to want to prep up. I was lucky this one came in fairly raw, but if I can just grab this one over here. Now, this is a pretty standard hardtail frame. It's already painted, it's got bits of sticker on it and things like that. How would the folks at home go about prepping something like this? Okay, so there's a few ways you can prep frames. Um, it, a lot of it depends on the material of the frame. Um, in this case it's aluminium and it depends on the condition of the current paint. If it's in good condition, um, again you can sand it um, and prep it and make sure you sand off all the logos so you can get nice smooth paintwork and things, take off all the stickers. Would you need to take this one back to bare metal like the one I've got here? This one I probably would because it's got rust on it, it's got some chips and bubbling of the paint and things oh, like that. Okay. So when the paint's in not such good condition, the best thing is to take it all the way back to raw. The easiest way to do that, which I totally recommend, is to find a local sand blaster or media blaster. Right. Speak to them. Uh, make sure they're happy at blasting frames because you don't want someone to go at it with, uh, <sighs> yeah, no, destroy your it. frame. Oh no. Frames. You want to make sure they are going to be um, plug in the thread holes and things like that. Oh, okay, um, that's But a good it, idea. it's normally about 30 pounds, 40 pounds, oh, and it will save you a whole world of pain when it comes to yeah. sanding or okay. um, paint stripper is something you can use, but it's a messy, messy job. Now, if you are thinking of going down the route of respraying your frame, it's worth noting that actually it can affect your frame's warranty. So a lot of frame manufacturers or cycle manufacturers don't really want you respraying their bikes. However, in cases like Paul's here, who's actually a certified painter for various manufacturers, it doesn't affect the warranty. So you can you can spray Giants, Santa Cruz's, Deviates, a few yeah, others out there, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. There's a few out there. Gosh, okay, well, it's plenty to do there. There's so lots to think about. There is, isn't there? There is, but I mean, I think we can do this. So shall we get to work on prepping this one and maybe we could do a few bits on this one yep. to show the good folk at home as well? Yeah, sounds cool. good. Okay, so this is now, if we were doing it full on at home, not sandblasting or anything like that, yep. this is what we do first. Quick uh, quick rub down with the alcohol. Get yep. all the dirt and grime off. Yep. Okay. So it cleans. Always start clean. Gotcha. That's the main thing with painting is keeping everything clean. 
Okay. Um, which is why it's important to wear gloves, not just to protect your hands, but also to protect the frame from getting dirty. Okay. If you've got a frame which is in good condition, um, the paintwork's all solid, um, it really just needs a good going over with something like this, which is a scotch pad. Scotch pad, okay. um, Again, it's just a case of like, rubbing it down, smoothing everything out. And that's enough, like, obviously a bit firmer, but that's enough yeah. just to take that shine off of it. Yeah, you want to give it a bit more than that, but yeah, you just want to give it a good old... Bit of elbow over. grease. And you can see, actually, where it's, it's bumpy, it starts to flatten that out a bit mm, as well. Okay. And that will give you enough for the paint to bite to. Right. Well, should we, uh, let's get the mask on. All right, Paul, I'm going to start on the chain stays back in, and I've got our 500 grit flexible sandpaper. We're masked up, and it's just... Giving it a good rub sand down, away. is it? Any lumps and bumps, any tips, try and sand them out smooth. Oh, you can really see like, yep. like it coming off, don't you? I can see why you definitely got to wear some kind of mask for sure. Oh, look at that. Okay, and then let's get all around. I mean, this is not the frame we're going to spray, but it's good to show. All around our welds and stuff like that around there. Yeah, that does bring it up. Really smooth, doesn't yeah. it? Really smooth. Right. You've spent the time getting your frame back to a good state, and hopefully, if you've had it sandblasted, it might look a little more like this one. I, just a little something I prepped earlier for you, just, mate. Just yeah, there. Yeah, I've already put the time in. So once we've got it back to looking like this, gloves on. Gloves on always. Yeah, and Don't. then it's, it's out with the alcohol, but not for a drink, innit? Well, you can have a drink first. I might need it after that, <laughs> Sam, then. Um, yeah, so this is obviously Every painter loves to be handed a raw frame because mm -hmm. it takes away a lot of the prep work. So gloves on because any fingerprints, any oil on your hands will get into the, the metal which wow. you don't want for paint. Um, so to make sure it is super clean, again you can get um, degreasers, yeah. alcohol cleaners. Do you need a mask with this stuff? Because it can be pretty potent, can't it's, it? It's probably from worth wearing a mask Okay. With this kind of stuff. Alright then, we better put it on. Mask on. Mask on. Flame on. Again, you're just going to get a clean rag, bit yep. on there, just give it a good old rub all over. And it's purely to get grease and like any hand marks, stains, anything any, like that. Any off. any contaminants, anything that's going to affect the, anything that's going to affect the paintwork, because paint and oil and grease don't go together very well. And you can see, you think it's clean, but if I just, you can see on there, it's a bit grubby, yeah. Yeah, like you see, grime. it's like a bit black and horrible. Oh, she's prepped and ready. We've got our gloves on. What's the next stage then when it's back to basics like this? So next step, almost ready for paint, but what you don't want to be doing is getting paint in threads, down tubes, uh, and in the important areas. So masking is the next step. Okay, let's do that. Let's do it. Paul, it's nearly time to start painting and she's hung up ready to get a, a little bit of experimenting on it. But obviously paint, what's the best paint or type of paint I should use? Well, there's loads of different types of paints, loads okay. of different rattle cans. Um, main thing you want to do is make sure you're using one which is suitable for what you're painting. Okay. Um, always read the instructions. I hear though, you want to try and paint like a pro. Oh, I'd like to try. I'm, try. Yeah, something using a bit shiny. Rattle, using rattle cans, you want a shiny finish. Yeah, And glossy. of course, remembering you're starting with a bare frame. Yeah. So, you're going to go for primer. Okay, so that's to First essentially all, prep the surface. Prep the surface. Okay. That will etch and bite into your surface. Etch and bite, Oof. Prepare it for, then it'll be a, a base coat. So that'll be okay. my, my colour, essentially. Yeah. That'll colours, colours, maybe. Solvent base coat. Um, this is where you want to be wearing masks for these all okay. the time. This on its own won't last. This will come off if you don't use a clear coat. So, and this lacquer, is your top yeah. coat. And this is basically oh, no. the final coat protects the paint. Protects the paint. That comes in. That's a gloss one you got there. It comes in matte satin finishes as well. Okay. So that's how you determine the finish of your frame. So it sounds like I'm making my life a little trickier. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I mean that's. That's the types of paint. I think there's only one thing for it, mate. We are in the booth, yep. uh, a bit of fire in the booth. Let's have a go at painting, sort of see that techniques and kind of if you could show me how you do it best, I guess. Let's do it. All right. Paul, I think I've got spraying 
pretty dialed, what do you think? Absolute pro. <laughs> okay, well, let's not go too far. Uh, what if I want to add, which I do, some proper personal touches, some real custom work to this, other than just a painting, what about a bit of stenciling? Uh, you showed me earlier, actually, a real cool way of making sort of homemade stencils. How, let's, let's have a quick look. Yep, so obviously at home, you don't have all the tools and things we have. No. So, but it's a simple way, so you get some standard mask and tape. All right. Just a couple of dibs on your <sighs> top like that, just to take some of the tackiness off. Okay, stick it down, it down then. And then you can use a pencil or whatever right. to draw. First, if you want to, or if you just want to make some cool shapes. Here you go, on the spot, see if you can do a pentagon. How many sides the pentagon got? <laughs> a five, innit? I think so. <laughs> What's that? It's a house. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to the corner? And there you go. Cool, okay. I feel like patience is a virtue on that one, I think. Painting is all about patience. Taking your time, patience. Uh, not known for that, I'll be honest, but <laughs> I think we'll be all right. Okay, well, mate, I think, do you know what? I've learned all I can possibly take into my brain today. It's been mega helpful, so I think I better get back to my garden and have a go. Yeah. You might expect a phone call now and again. You can phone me anytime, <laughs> not a day. All right, mate, thank you very much for all your help. It's been a pleasure. No problem, look forward to seeing it. Paul has left me to fend for myself then, so I've brought the frame home where I'm gonna do all the prep work in my kitchen. Do you know what? My kitchen's been ripped out in about a few weeks' time, so I'm not too fussed on it, but if you're doing it in yours by any chance, then I would probably put a lot more rags down than I have here, but it's time to get it prepped. I'm gonna have the door wide open so there's loads of airflow for the cleaning. And I think that's about it. I think it's time to bite the bullet and get this frame custom. There we go then, one prepped, primed and ready frame to be painted. So it is actually almost crunch time. There's one last thing we gotta to do to this. I've gotta apply my stickers or my decals. So let's put those on. Yeah, I'd say like that wraps around fairly equally. If anything, this one is possibly a touch lower. Possibly a touch lower. But if you look, the gap to the weld there is fairly similar to the gap to the weld there. But the, oh, the trouble is the weld obviously slopes down. Okay, this is a cheeky little moustache I'm gonna put on the front. Uh, it's kind of like a running thing me and the missus have got going. I had one on a couple of custom lids. Ay caramba. Okay, here she is then, prepped and ready. Now I've made my own spraying stand. I've got my work stand, covered it up so I didn't get it covered in paint. And I didn't have a pole thing like Paul has, so I found a, an old hammer. But the rubber handle actually grips it surprisingly well, look. That can swing that way. And then if I put that there, hey presto, I can basically move around it. I'll clear my bike out of the way. Um, and I've done some testery stuff before on some color schemes and things like that. So I think there's only one thing for it now, and let's get painting. We need to make sure it's super well mixed in the tin, so a big old shake, and I'm gonna do a quick spray on the old uh, cardboard box there just to make sure the nozzle's not chunked up or anything. Always good to do a test there. Yeah, I think we're good. I think there's only one thing for it. Okay, I've not also got my best clothes on, I should warn you that. If you're, if you're protective of your clothes, put ovals on. I'm not so much. There we go then, two coats of red on, and it is looking beautiful, but we're not done yet. You might be wondering why I'm holding three toothbrushes. Well, no, I don't just like super duper clean teeth. We're gonna add even more customness to this, and I'm gonna give it like a cool 
80s and styled splatter effect because I'm an 80s child and I really like it. So let's get splattering. All right, give the paint a good mix again. And like I said before, I have done a bit of a test of this. I looked up online how to do this actually. So all I'm doing is with some spray, I'm going to spray it into my little tub here. Should have put my mask on, my bad. And then you just basically dip the paintbrush in and splatter. But just to make sure I'm absolutely happy with it, I'm going to do it on my cardboard box again just to make sure I've got my, my technique right. Maybe I need a firmer bristle. So let's just dunk that in there. Oh, yeah. Okay. Moment of truth. It's really cool getting nice and sort of creative with it. And I like, I'm trying to keep it, I want it sort of a, focus mostly around the head tube, but like you get obviously some little rogue splatters making their way down and I, I quite like that. Okay, we're gonna add another color. Splatters are dried then and it's coming up good, but now it's time to lacquer it. So I'm gonna mask up again, get my gloves on. Uh, I didn't wear them when I was doing the splattering because I wanted to get a good thumb action so it splattered nicely, but I'm gonna stick them back on for this and we'll get lacquering. This lacquer's a little bit different. She's a bit, got a bit of a sparkle to it. Oh, a sparkle you say? Oh. <laughs> This is really fun. I'm actually really enjoying doing this. No way. I'm really pleased with that. All right, let's let that dry a moment before we go de-stickering or anything like that. She's very nearly finished then. This is the bit I was most nervous about, and it's basically removing those stickers I put down at the start. Here goes my uh, steady hand. Oh no! I'm scared. Okay, ready? Oh my God, my hand's so wobbly. Oh, oh, look at that. Oh, that is crisp. Look how good that looks. We might have to hide inside in a moment though because it's starting to rain. And uh, I need to then lacquer this after. Actually, it is raining a bit. Abort mission. We're going inside to the kitchen. Damn. Have a look at that. That was a bit nerve wracking, but those have come off so good. Uh, let's get a clear coat of lacquer on that and then head back to the studio. There we have it then, back in the set and we're all done and dusted. Time for the grand unveiling. So, drum roll please, Mr. Editor. Ta-da! There she is, it's come out amazingly well. I am so pleased with how this is finished. Uh, just the detailing, the graphics, the colour, it all looks amazing. So amazing, in fact, that look, I accidentally coordinated my t-shirt for it today. Uh, but I'm hyped. This has turned out really great. And keep your eyes peeled for the full build of it coming soon in the future. But for now, that is me out of it. If you want to see more spraying in the future, maybe uh, drop us a little comment down below. Maybe you'd like your own frame done. Maybe we could sort something out. Who knows? But for now, I'm out of it. Thanks very much for watching, everyone, and I'll catch you later.